me. Great, thanks, Adrian. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, Susan, if you could advance the slide, I'll just briefly introduce the three of us. I'm Darcy Borio with Paramount Workplace. And with us today also is Boyd Maynard, Vice President of Sales, and Susan Thiesing, Director of Channel Sales, also at Paramount Workplace. Um, the next slide, please, Susan. We're going to take a look at the agenda for today, uh, just to give you a quick idea of what we're going to cover. So, you know, there's lots of reasons to automate your accounts payable processes, and I'm guessing that if I open up the lines right now and ask everybody on the call what AP automation would look like to them, I'd probably get a lot of different different answers. So whether it's going paperless or speeding up the approvals process or maybe reducing data entry, there's lots of reasons to, um, lots of ways you can realize savings through automation. But when it comes to the entire procure to pay cycle, AP automation is just one piece of the puzzle. So if you're evaluating your workflow around invoices, then that's a great start. But what happens before the invoice even exists and we'll talk about that today and how automating requisition and procurement processes along with AP can help you control spend before it happens. So Susan's going to give you a quick background that's the about us on Paramount Workplace and then Foy is going to show you um, where AP automation fits in with spend management and the procure to pay process as a whole and we'll also provide you with some tools to calculate the return on investment for automating both procurement and accounts payable. So with that, Susan Thiessy, it's all you. Thank you, Darcy. Okay, so a little bit about us. We are a technology company founded in 1995. We have longevity in the spend management space, and we are subject matter experts in requisition and procurement and expense management and reporting. We also complement these spend modules with AP automation and project timesheets for tracking time for your employees and contractors. We are laser focused on all these areas and how we interface with your ERP, which I will talk about a little bit more in a minute. One of the coolest parts of our solution is our mobile app, which makes it super easy to requisition or start an expense report or do approvals on the go, which completely integrates with our web-based portal, which is easily accessible from any browser. Currently, we serve over 135,000 users globally with a keen focus on our clients' experience and our product quality. We have internal certified resources as well as external certified consultants who are available to ensure a successful rollout across your entire organization. We can deploy either on your server or on-premise or host the applications for you. Either deployment Paramount Workplace uses the same mobile app and web portal. And because we develop best practice applications, we are able to assist customers in any industry and are especially helpful to those who have intensive workflows who ultimately need to send those spend transactions or those AP voucher transactions into the ERP, allowing you to fully automate with no keying of information, again, over in the ERP. Paramount Workplace has the strongest out-of-the-box integration to the listed ERPs. We directly link to your ERP. So when you pull up a vendor list, a GL account code, or a GL budget, it's pulling directly from Sage or Intact or Acumatica and so on. So when you purchase the software, that integration is ready to use. Think of Paramount Workplace as a sub subledger for all the money that will be spent on goods and services, as well as reimbursing or reconciling to expenses for employees. Because we think it's super important for your accounts payable to know that when they get an AP voucher transaction from Paramount Workplace, no other thought needs to go into paying that vendor as there's confidence that the transaction has already been full through a full approval and audit process before anything is sent to the ERP. And yes, of course, we make it really easy for customers to shop and request goods and services or submit their expenses. But for me, having worked for Sage for several years, it's all about the integration to and from the ERP that makes this such a powerful product. We work in multi-currency and multi-language if needed. Our annual releases are based on market research 
course, we want to stay ahead of the curve, but most importantly, we listen to our users and our partners and incorporate those features based on need. We have an easy to use, 100% web-based portal that is able to run from your computer, tablet, or iPod, iPad. And of course, we support most browsers, so Chrome, Firefox, Explorer, Microsoft Edge, and Safari. We want you to have visibility to your company's spend and expenses at any time. We also allow for industry standard authentication modes for users to log in, so application, SSO, Active Directory, and SQL. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Foy to talk about the product, and then we will dive into the software. All right, Susan, thank you very much. So uh, as Susan was talking about, you know, the integration is a key point, not only the integration between uh, you know, the procurement uh, and the uh, AP solution that you're using, but also the integration uh, between the departments. I mean, what we're gonna talk about today ultimately is how do you automate the entire process to make it easier for all of the users that are a part of both the purchasing uh, and accounts payable process. So the integration is key so that you can have a single point of data entry and visibility throughout the entire process. So as we go through today, I'm gonna talk a little bit through some PowerPoint slides and then also show you some highlights of a product demonstration. I'm gonna talk about uh, ease of use, flexibility of the system, configuration of the application, and then also some of the other key components that we offer. One of the biggest things that we'll talk about and touch on is uh, routing rules. We're gonna offer routing and approvals throughout the entire process, whether you're a requester, entering a request for goods or services, to ultimately create a PO, whether you're doing a change order on a purchase order, uh, whether you're doing invoice matching to a PO or a check request for a non-PO invoices, all of that's gonna be common throughout each of those steps so that ultimately you're managing by exception rather than having to manage each individual transaction that goes through. We'll also touch on some other areas like punch out, uh, which during the purchasing process is very key for leveraging relationships with vendors. And then we'll talk about some of the other ways to get information available to the user, whether that be OCR, a Dropbox, uh, or just simply manually entering the information. Okay, Susan, next. So a little bit about the requisition and procurement. Uh, some of the key components that we offer. Uh, again, you've got the routing rules and the approval workflow that can be a part of this process so that as the requisitions are entered, they'll route for approval by line item. So each individual line could route to a different approver or through a different process. If changes are made or edits are made by approvers throughout the process, then you can continue to have the approval routing rules take place and enforce the spend that is going through the application. We're going to talk about punch out and catalogs. How easy is it for a user to be able to enter the information onto a requisition? And then we'll touch on some areas like project and job cost, where you can extend the functionality of your solution and leverage project or job cost solutions that you have in place. We'll briefly mention inventory and materials management so that you understand that within the application, if you're also maintaining inventory for consumable purposes, then you're able to not only create a purchase order, but also fulfill or release items from inventory. We'll focus a good bit on the approvals and some of the things that you can do as a part of the approval process, where that's ad hoc approvals to be be able to send that out to a different person that's not traditionally a part uh, of the process, where that's questionnaires that can be a part of the requisition or a part of the expense uh, as they go through. And then just some of the key components that we won't touch on as much in this demo, but just so that you're aware of, it's the multi-currency, the multi-languages for larger organizations or organizations that are outside of the U.S. It's multi-company and intercompany uh, for those types of organizations as well. And then it's things like GL distributions, the ability to distribute an individual line to multiple GL accounts. It's GL budgeting, so you can compare the transactions to the budgets as they go through the process, route for approval and get warnings for each of those areas. And then as Susan goes to the next slide, You'll see many of the same touch points that I mentioned earlier on the requisition side of things because, again, the approvals are very important. The routing rules being unlimited, routing to as many people as you want or as many groups as you need, you know, are key components throughout this entire process. Obviously, on the AP automation side, we're talking more about invoice matching, two- or three-way matching, the receiving capabilities, uh, approvals by variant 
payments between the invoice and the purchase order, but then also non-PO invoices, transactions where you need to make a payment for something that you didn't create a requisition or a PO for, utility bills, legal fees, landscaping services, whatever the case may be. Again, all a part of your overall spend management process and work you're looking to do with a, a software application to be able to automate that. All right, Susan. And then I'm going to cut briefly on expense just on this slide. Uh, as shown earlier, we do offer an expense solution, not necessarily today's topic, but when you're looking for an application to manage your overall spend and you're looking at something for the procurement and the AP automation side, you know, it makes sense to have an expense solution that has the same or similar user interface, approval routing processes, but then also very robust functionality for OCR of the receipts, Google Map and mileage calculations, as well as all of those multi-currency and tax options that are there. So as you take a look uh, at your overall spend management solution, if you also need any type of expense functionality, that's certainly something that we can help you with as well. All right, Susan. And now what we're gonna do is spend a little bit of time uh, in the actual product itself. I'm gonna hit on the highlights uh, as we go through this. I'm not gonna necessarily do a day in the life uh, of a transaction, but I'm going to touch on some of the more important things. One of the overall goals of this webinar was to give you the information that you need, as I share my screen here, was to give you the information that you need to be able to um, justify using a spin management procurement AP automation solution, and then give you some of those key areas where this can help, and ultimately how it can help you overall throughout the process. So as I go through this, you know, please understand that I'm gonna jump around just a little bit. I'll spend a good bit of time uh, on the mobile app uh, that Susan mentioned. We'll take a good long look at the requester, and then we'll also touch on the approvals and a few of the other pieces that we offer as well. So this is the uh, emulator here of the mobile app that we offer for both iPhone and Android. And with that mobile app, you can take advantage of requisition, expense as well as project time entry. I've got all three of those turned on for this particular user. So you see that here on our home screen. Just like expense, project time was a natural extension uh, of the spin management functionality because one of the things that we do is we interface to many different project solutions. That could be the project solution that's maintained within the ERP, or it could also be an outside third party solution. So understand that as we go through the demonstration here, that these transactions that we're entering could also be related to a project for billing purposes or tracking against a project uh, as we walk through. And we also offer our own project solution as well. So here on the screen, we've got several different catalogs across different companies that we're able to shop. One of the goals of the mobile app or at procurement as a whole is to make it easy for the user, make it simple, ease of use, and make it accessible for the user anytime, anywhere. So from your mobile device, you can come in here to a catalog that you've got set up. You can view the items that are a part of the catalog. You can click on an item to see additional information and additional details, and then you can add items to the cart and begin building that shopping cart. You can shop that catalog you can also shop other catalogs and continue to add items to the cart. Ultimately, you are building a cart in the same form, same fashion that you would do from home if you were shopping a main site to be able to buy. It's a common experience. It's, some, it's an experience that users use in their personal lives, and now you're extending that experience to the business where they can come in and build those carts. Once you're done building the carts, you can review that to see the information update any of the information as needed, and then submit. When you submit that, it'll actually go ahead and create a requisition. So all the user had to do was shop a couple of catalogs, pick the items they want, and then submit. The requisition's been created and is now available for approval. So for our demo purposes today, I'm gonna stay logged in as the same user, but we also have the approval capabilities available on the mobile app as well. So down here at the bottom, if I click on approvals, it's gonna switch over the screen here. You can see any open approval sessions that you have. These would be approval sessions that you started but did not finish. And then you can also see your to-do list of items that you have pending your approval. And again, this would show you by company. So if you're working within multiple companies or multiple databases, you'd be able to see and pick those. We'll go pick the requisition, look at the requisition, and then look at items on the requisition. 
once you look at those items, you'd be able to approve or disapprove at the line item level. You could also approve or disapprove at the entire requisition level and then be able to enter notes. So if we were going to disapprove this, we could say, please provide more details. We could also give them additional information, provide them any hints that they might need about what it is that we're looking for, and then disapprove that item. When you disapprove a line, it goes back to the original requester with those notes for them to make those changes and then resubmit that requisition. You can also approve the requisition. When you approve the requisition, it would then move on through the actual process based upon the selections that you've made. We've now approved the items, or excuse me, disapproved that one item on the requisition. We left the other item on hold or as a waiting, and it'll be available for us to come back and look at later. And then you've also got the history here. Always come in and view the history by company for those different requisitions. So you can come in and see where your requisitions are. If they've been approved, you'll see that they were approved. If they're disapproved, you'll see that they were disapproved. And if they're pending approval, you'll be able to see who they're pending approval from and get that information here. So we've extended the functionality that's inherently available within the browser or the web-based application out over the web and allowed the user to have access to the catalogs to be able to shop, allowed the approvers to be able to approve and disapprove from that mobile app, and then also provided a dashboard so that you can see the different transactions here and know where those transactions are in the process. So again, this is about accessibility of the information while you're on the go at any time or anywhere, but then also about the functionality that's available as well. Make it easy for the user to be able to put those transactions in and then ultimately submit those. We've also got the expense. Just real quick, I'll go ahead and click and touch on the expense here just to show you uh, how that works and give you an idea there. You'd be able to take a receipt, take a picture of the receipt, automatically scan that receipt and then pull the information in. If any changes need to be made to the information, you could change that. And then you'd also be able to pick expense types as well as payment methods and then ultimately submit that. So you can create and generate expense lines um, here within the mobile app, and you could also ultimately create an expense sheet from the mobile app as well, and then have that go through the approval process. And yes, you can approve expenses as well as approve time from this same mobile app. All right, so now I'm gonna switch over to the browser, and we're gonna spend a good bit of time here expanding on some of the things that we just talked about, as well as on touching on some of the other areas. I'm gonna log in as FOI, and FOI is a requester, and when I log in as FOI, you see the information that's been displayed based upon the security rights that this user has from their setup within Workplace. Our users do not need to be users in the back office uh, ERP system that you're using. They are our individual named users that are set up to be able to come in and enter the information, approve the transactions, create POs, et cetera. This is the dashboard for the user. And when a user logs in, they're all presented with a dashboard that's designed to give a quick and easy glance at where their transactions are in the process. We've also got announcements that can be made available by user, by department, or system-wide to be, give the information that may be needed when they log in. And then we have the outstanding transactions. This is a key component to the dashboard because you're going to be able to see where your transactions are at a glance in the process. This is visibility to those transactions. And if different lines have different statuses, you can see where those are in the process. If they're waiting for approval, you can see who they're waiting for approval from. And if you need more information, click, drill down on that requisition. On the left-hand side are some icons that if you hover over, will give you some details about each of those lines and see where those are in the process. As you note, this is line-based, so you can have each line be at a different step in the process, approved, disapproved, creation of a PO, uh, also awaiting approval. We, our very robust approval routing engine accomplishes the ability to be able to have the lines route for approval without having to worry about is everything on the request for the same vendor or for the same GL account. You can see that there. You can also use the details down here at the bottom of the screen. If you use the details, you're going to be able to see a status of the requisition, each step of the process for the requisition, and then ultimately the purchasing information so that once this was paid, you'd be able to see 
the voucher number, the voucher date, the check amount, uh, and the amount paid. So you can drill down all the way from the initial view of the transaction to the details of the individual line. And as long as you're a user who has access to the requisition, you've got this visibility. So the visibility is key because not only are people in the purchasing process going to be able to have this, but also once this is received, invoice match, the AP has a view to this as well and can see this information all the way from the start of the individual transaction. All right, so let's step back a little bit and let's talk about how some of those items on that requisition that we just looked at got entered. So as you see here on the screen, there's a shop section. These are catalogs that are available to this user that they can shop to generate a requisition. Just like on the mobile app, we've got some workplace internal catalogs that if we click, we're gonna be able to see pictures and descriptions and pricing. You're gonna be able to see additional information and additional details as needed. You're gonna be able to build your cart from that catalog as well as other catalogs. And then once you're done building your cart, review that cart, and then click on create order requisition. So what we just did there via the browser is essentially what we did via the mobile app, very similar functionality. Now on the mobile app, when we submitted the requisition, or excuse me, uh, checked out of the cart, it actually went ahead and submitted that requisition to route for approval. And we could have had the same thing happen here. As soon as I checked out with that cart, it could have submitted route for approval and essentially the user would not need to do anything else for that requisition unless of course a line on it was disapproved but for our webinar today i've got it opened up to our requisition entry screen so this is actually the screen where you can enter requisitions as well as input more detail one of the things that you'll see as we talk to people about their overall procurement process is it's not always consistent. And by that, I mean, it, not everything can be put into a catalog because it's not always the same. And then sometimes the users need the additional flexibility, to provide more information or more details. Maybe it's the vendor or the GL account or a view to the GL budget or it's attachments or notes or comments. Then we can allow the flexibility for that to be entered by the user as well from this particular screen. So as you look here, the first two lines that came in again are those ones from the internal catalog. As we create this requisition, we can name the requisition. So if this is for a remodel of an office on the seventh floor, we can type that in to identify the requisition. At a glance, you'll know what this requisition is for. And it's also a field that you can query and look up on as well. In addition to naming the requisition, you've also got comments that you can enter for each line. So a vendor comment where you can say, I need these as soon as possible. That's something that would be able to be viewed by the other users as well as flow over and print on the purchase order so the vendor could see it if you like. You can also have internal comments where you can provide additional information, longer descriptions, special instructions, or even justification of why you need this particular item. So you can say these are for the office that is next to the elevator, just down from the stairwell whatever you need to say to provide that information for that individual line. These are line item comments. So each individual line can have its own vendor comment, its own internal comment, and you'll see a little icon appears there when the line has a comment, and then you'd be able to view those there. You can also have header comments. Those header comments allow you to have comments that apply at the overall requisition level. So they apply to everything here on the requisition and not just to the individual lines. And that allows you to have additional information and additional details. You'll also see a project field here at the line item level. As I mentioned earlier, we integrate to many different project solutions. And if that's the case here, you can have that information be entered. You can have more than one field. In this example, I just have the project field. But if you also have a cost category, a phase, or an activity, you know, then that could be available there uh, as well for each of those lines and be able to enter that. In addition to being able to have the flexibility to configure and add more details to the requisition, you may also want to build a requisition in several different ways. Another way to build and add items to a requisition is with what's called punch out. Now, punch out is an open industry standard that is leveraged to be able to 
have your relationship with the vendor be used as a part of the requisition process. So the vendor will maintain the catalogs for you as their customer, your items and your pricing based upon your negotiations. Pick a vendor from the list that's punch out. It'll actually go out to that vendor site. Here's the Office Depot site. I can go in and I can use my different categories to go find what it is that I'd like here. I can also search by keyword or by item number to find what it is that I'm looking for. I can build my cart. Once I add a quantity, I can shop additional items. And then once I'm done, just like the process we went through on both the app and then a moment ago with the internal catalogs on the browser, we can check out. And then once we check out, that item or items will be pulled onto the requisition. There's our five dozen ballpoint stick pins from Office Depot. That order is not complete yet. It will not be complete until a purchase order is created. And when the purchase order is created, it'll be sent electronically to the vendor. That will complete the transaction and then they'll ship you those items. So one of the things that's a part of the ROI uh, on procurement and AP automation solutions is also the relationship with the vendor. Typically when we talk about relationship with the vendor, it's talking about getting them paid on time or getting them paid quicker. That's one of the key advantages that we'll talk about here uh, in a few minutes, but it's also these relationships at the very beginning of the process. When you're able to negotiate pricing with the vendor and the vendor is able to assist you with making it easy to shop their site and to purchase their items, then that's going to be beneficial to both organizations. It's beneficial to the vendor, obviously, because you're buying more from them, but it's beneficial to you as an organization because when you've negotiated that price, and a requester picks that from the catalog, then you already know that you're getting it at the right price from the right vendor, and you can eliminate parts of the approval process. Same thing with internal catalogs. When you're creating internal catalogs and you know that the price is correct, then that is a part of the approval. I mentioned manage by exception earlier. You're not having to touch every single transaction. You're only having to touch the ones that are over a certain dollar amount or over budget, whatever the case may be, and catalogs are a key part of that. So as you're looking at proposing uh, and working with a procurement solution, keep that in mind. It's ease of use because it's easy to select items for the catalog in a common experience that people use in their day-to-day -day lives, but it's also extending beyond that to the approval process and to the relationship with the vendor. So that's key as we look at the overall picture here. So there's three lines entered in two different ways. You've also got what's called a shopping list. Now a shopping list is essentially a favorites list. It's regularly requested items. It's a monthly office supply order. It's a job, event, project. These can be set up by user, by department or made available system wide. If you have access to the list, you'll see it in the drop down. Click to select the list that you want to use. And here are the items that we would typically request when we need something for a new computer. Just put a quantity into the fields of what you want this time. Load those items. Those items are now loaded onto the requisition. You could shop other lists if needed and continue to add items to the requisition. But that's another quick and easy way that you can have regularly requested items be input onto the requisition. And the same things as we talked about before. When you set up a shopping list or a catalog, you can default the vendor. You can default the GL account code. So all that information is already there. You're in control of the pricing, so you know that the pricing's correct. You know that it's the proper items. You're only able to order the inexpensive ballpoint stick pens. You can't order the mock, mock pens that are much more expensive. Controlling the items, controlling the pricing, and then it's going a long way to taking that step to help manage your approval processes. You can also import requisitions in a CSV template if you need to enter them offline. You can duplicate requisitions, pull up a past requisition, Duplicate it as new, make any changes, additions, or deletions, and submit that requisition. Come into the body of the requisition. So one of the other components that we offer as a part of the procurement is also inventory. We do integrate to many different inventory or item masters of back office ERPs. We also have our own inventory. The purposes of having the integration to the inventory is that for internal consumption purposes, instead of creating a PO, you can fulfill or release an item from inventory. You can also transfer an item from one location to another uh, using the application. So this allows you to maintain on hand 
and not have to go out and make those purchases. This is very popular for materials management side in the healthcare industry, for hospitals and for clinics, so that you can have the ability to have the different locations, the different storage areas for the items, and then when you need something, you're able to still create a requisition, still have any approvals that are necessary, but not have to create a PO and wait because you're gonna be able to pick that item uh, and then indicate that that item was received. So you have the ability to go in have the item master or inventory available, pick that, and then have that populate onto the requisition, and you just simply need to enter a quantity. And you can always free form enter what it is that you need. Maybe uh, you don't have catalog set up, or there's something that's not on the catalog that the user would like to request. Because remember, this is just the requester. They're, they're doing just that. They're making a request. Ultimately, you've still got to this, get this fully approved before the PO can be created. So if they can manually type in the information, that's fine. It can still route for approval. But one of the things that we've added in addition to the comments and the name is a questionnaire. The questionnaire is based upon the expense type. And when I choose the expense type for the item, now I can have specific information be gathered. So for that laptop, I need to let the user pick, well, what size screen would you like? how much RAM, what size hard drive, do you want that to be a solid state drive, and then what's any additional requirements that you might want. So we have the IT example here is actually a really good example of where this is commonly used. We also use this on the expense side, like if you entertain a customer or a prospect and you can provide more information about the entertainment. You can require answers here, so they must enter a response. And these are very easy to set up by a system administrator to have the different questions, the different response types, as well as any hints that you need to provide, and then have that information be a part of that line. And because it's based upon expense type, and because all of the information down here on the general tab is based upon the line, as we click through the lines, you can see some information change down here. Each line could have a different expense type, a different questionnaire to be able to enter that and have that be a part of that particular um, transaction. Now you can also attach files. So if you wanna be able to attach a file, click, go attach the office plans for that particular requisition. And then once that's there, you'll be able to see that on our inline attachment view over here on the right hand side, as well as see on the line that the attachment is there. These attachments, again, can be visible throughout the entire process. Certainly the approver is going to be able to see them, but maybe you're attaching quotes. You can attach multiple quotes here, and if you attach those quotes, then you're ultimately going to be able to see those through the purchasing process and then also after the accounts payable has been done. So a record of that everything was done properly and everything that's on the overall transaction as it goes through the purchasing. So as you can see, we spent a good bit of time here uh, on the requisition entry screen. So I do that just so you can see you know, the different ways that information can be entered. You know, I do want to make it clear that what we hear nowadays is you know, keep it simple, make it easy to use. You know, I want my requesters to be able to input information very easily, which is what you see with the mobile app and then what you see with the catalogs. But then we also talk to people, and you know, maybe it's different departments in the organization, um, or maybe it's the organization as a whole, where something's always different. Every time they request something, it's pretty specific because they have to provide specifications or details or whatever the case may be. Then you give them that flexibility to be able to provide more information, attachments and comments that they can have on those requisitions before they ultimately submit those for approval. And then you've got general ledger budgets where you can compare requisitions to the budgets, get a warning if you're over budget, route for approval if you're over budget. You've got GL distributions where you can distribute to an individual, distribute an individual line to multiple general ledger accounts and have that information be available. So just additional details, additional information that can be done here that again is still part of the return on investment of the process because now you get those controls too. So GL Budget's a great example. Uh, we've done a lot of business uh, with, with not-for-profits, and obviously not-for-profits, it's very key to understand you know, where their money is being spent, you know, from based upon where it came from. So you've got the general ledger budgets that you can focus on and then be able to have that detail at the very beginning as well as throughout the process. 
with project systems, you've got project budgets that you compare uh, the requisition to. So we've got that information. And then we also have vendor contracts. Down here on the lower left-hand side, you'll see a field called vendor contract. And vendor contracts can be used essentially for budgeting with a vendor as well. So you could use a vendor contract to track spending with a vendor because maybe you get a rebate once you hit a certain level. A more common use of vendor contracts is enforcing pricing. I talked about using catalogs to enforce pricing, shopping lists to enforce pricing, but vendor contract takes that to another level. With the vendor contract, you could set up a specific price for an item with a specific vendor and then make sure that anytime that item was purchased or requested that you're going to get it from that vendor at that price and then you're able to have that there. So that's just an additional control that you have in place, but you're again, you're making it easy for the users because you can have it automated so that all they know is that they want the um, ballpoint stick pens, but as soon as they pick the ballpoint stick pens, it's going to make sure you get it at the right price and from the right vendor. And then that would be requisition entry and how you get information onto the requisition. But again, keeping in mind that so much of this is available throughout the entire process from a visibility standpoint. We're going to spend the next couple of minutes talking about approvals because throughout the entire process, the approvals are critical, not because you want to slow down the process. In fact, we find, uh, and you'll see here in a moment, um, you know, other industry analysts and pay stream advisors finds that the average number of approvers is two. And that actually should be what it is. You shouldn't need, for the most part, of the requisition more than two approvers, maybe the person's manager and then someone else. Obviously, if you need more levels, there are unlimited levels of approval. If you start getting into high level of expenses uh, based upon the dollar amount or maybe project expenses or IT expenses, you can certainly route for approval there. Um, but you're, allowed, you're able to simplify it and keep the process moving because you'll see here as we get towards the end that one of the key areas of where you're able to justify uh, implementing a solution like this is by reducing the amount of time and reducing the amount of people that have to touch each, re each requisition. So when we submit this for approval, I already showed you that we can um, approve via the mobile app. You can also approve via um, the email that you get, because we're going to send an email out letting the approver know that they have requisitions that are pending their approval. So you can get this email, and once you get the email, you can see the details, you can see the information, including the, the comments that are there. You can reply to it, and then once you reply, there are brackets in the email. At the header, a Y or an N would approve or disapprove everything. At the line level, a Y would approve that individual line, an N would disapprove the line, and you can enter a note to the requester, and those notes will go in an email and also appear on the log. So once you enter that information and then send this reply, you'd be able to approve there as well. So even if you don't use the mobile app, you can use the email-based approvals to make sure that you approve and disapprove and keep items going on. As a part of the approval process, and again, in order to expedite these items going through, you can get alerts if you are not approving in a certain amount of time. You can bypass levels of approval if they haven't approved in a certain amount of time, and you'll never bypass the final approver. you just be able to bypass with full audit log of um, anybody that wasn't doing their job as far as the approval goes. You've got the ability to have ad hoc approvals so that during the approval process, you can send it off to someone else. You've also got parallel approvals where you can send it to multiple people at the same time and have any number of those approve it before it can move on. So a lot of flexibility to handle your approval processes uh, within the organization. You can also approve via your browser window. So if we, oops, if we log in as Lisa, Lisa's one of our, of our approvers here. When you log in, you can see a to-do list, just like we saw on the mobile app. Click and load, and then now you've got the information available here so that you can see those details. You can see the items that are a part of the requisition. You can see any attachments that are there, and then you have this information available to you. One of the benefits here is that approvers also have the ability to edit. So if, as the requester, they did not enter uh, a GL account or a vendor, maybe they don't have to or they don't know it, you could allow the approver or somebody else uh, that's a part of the process to be able to enter that information there as well as any other details. So you've got the ability to edit, 
requisitions as they go through. There's a details log that will show you who changed it, when they changed it, what they changed it from, and what they changed it to. So you've always got an audit trail for any of the edits that you make. You've also got notes to the requester, and you can use these notes to the requester to tell them about any changes that you made, any comments that you might have, or any instructions that you want to provide. When we were on the mobile app, I used these to tell them why I disapproved it. But even if you're approving it, you can give them additional information and then additional details. And again, a key component, you can approve or disapprove all in this session. You can approve or disapprove at the requisition level, or you can approve and disapprove at the line level. So you can control the individual purchases from the line, have them go through the different approval processes. If you wanna keep them all together, you do have the ability to do that uh, as well, but this would certainly allow you to not slow down the process because the entire requisition had to be resolved before it could then move on. Submit this and then they'll route for approval. Again, they go back to the requester if they've been disapproved. Uh, if you disapprove an item, you've got to enter a note. So you got to put in a note. And this one will tell them to find a cheaper printer and resubmit. And that'll go in an email and also appear on the log. Key component of the approval process is alternates. Alternates have the ability to approve in the place of the original approver. It's very easy to turn your alternates on. So simply click there if you're gonna be in a meeting all afternoon and you want somebody to be able to approve in your place and those alternates are now activated. You can also schedule your alternates with from and to dates. So if you're gonna be in a training class for a few days or if you're gonna be on vacation, then go in and enter those dates and you could approve or your alternate could approve or disapprove during those times. And if you forget, system administrator can activate the alternates on your behalf and they can approve in your place and keep items moving on. So again, simplicity and ease of use is not only at the entry level, it's also during the approval process, simplifying it based upon how the information gets in, but then also making it easy for the approvers to approve on the go and have that information continue to flow through. And again, that approval process, the things that we looked at, the email notifications that go out, the ability to approve via the email is available, whether it's a requisition, uh, whether it's a purchase order, invoice matching, or check request, you've got all of that capability that's there. And that's a key important, a key part of the process. I've been with Paramount for almost 16 years now. And, you know, I was I'll tell, tell people when I do these presentations that, you know, 15, 16 years ago, it was all about the controls. It was all about making sure that the requester wasn't doing something that they weren't supposed to be doing. So approvals were critical back then too. But now it's all about how easy can you make it for the people to get the information into the system? How easy can you make it uh, for them to approve it and then have it move on? Same procurement process, same in results, same savings, similar ROI throughout all of those years, but just a little bit of a different uh, attitude as a part of the process. So now it is about how easy is it across all levels of the organization and then tying all of those pieces within the organization together. All right, so let me go on to a couple of other things here real quick. We've talked about requisitions for procurement for a good while. Uh, we've also got what's called a check request, which is a non-PO invoice. So if you go in and do a check request, then you can have the invoice be available uh, for the user to be able to enter the information uh, from the invoice. Several different ways that you can do this. You can, if you're a small uh, AP department and you don't get a whole lot of invoices, the information can be entered manually. You can put this information into a Dropbox and have it available to the users. There's also OCR as well as e-invoicing capabilities to get the details and the information in. But again, the overall goal is to take the invoices that are coming in, whether they're non-PO invoices or whether they're invoices that are going to be matched to a PO, have them be entered into the application so that they can be approved. And then once they're fully approved, that creates the transaction over in the ERP system, typically within accounts payable, so that it could then be paid. So as you look at the different types of transaction, a check request be another transaction, and then how you get that information in can be done in several different ways, depending upon your environment, the number of invoices that you have, and then what you're looking to do, what you're looking to do there. All right, so we focused a lot on the uh, 
corporate or the organizational process and what it is that they're able to do. What I want to touch on for the next few minutes is, you know, what can the vendors do? You know, what is it that we're going to be able to have the vendors do to assist as a part of this process, but not only assist as a part of the process, but also help them out as well. And one of the things that can facilitate that is a vendor portal. So here's a vendor portal uh, that we offer as a service, and you can do several things within the vendor portal. First off, once a PO is created, the vendor will be notified via email that there's a purchase order that's been created for them to fulfill. So we would be able to click here as the vendor, we'd be able to add an attachment and then input the invoice number, comments at the header, comments at the line, as well as additional information, and then have the vendor actually fill out the invoice information themselves. And then once they save that, it would go over into the workplace application, and then you'd be able to have it route for approval again before uh, the payment could be made. So a little bit of vendor self-service when it comes to the purchase order. You also allow the vendor or can allow the vendor to do a non-PO invoice. So if we click here, you can go in and look, and this would be if the vendor was entering an invoice that they wanted you to pay that was not associated with a, um, a PO, and then they'd be able to input that here, and then they would be able to send that too. That would go over into check request in the workplace application and then be able to route for approval. You've also got some vendor self-service when it comes to the vendor information and the address information. So first off, we've got a vendor approval module so that you'd be able to enter the vendor information from within workplace, have it be approved before it could create the vendor over in the back office or ERP. As a part of that approval process, you can also allow the vendor to add address information, change address information, put in attachments. So the vendor has some things that they can do on their side and then let them do some of the work. If they do submit this, it would go into the vendor approval and need to be approved before any changes could be made over in the back office financial uh, or ERP system. So this right here, again, is the vendor portal. We're allowing the vendor to do some of the work or some of the effort. There is a benefit to them. I mean, one of the biggest benefits or ROI that we're going to talk about or we have been talking about is now the vendors are going to get paid faster. And obviously, they'd like to be paid faster and or be paid on time. And they're going to be able to do that if they obviously are able to enter or send their information to you uh, in some form or format. And then last thing here, I didn't mention it early on in the prospect, that there's also a request for quote uh, capability within the application. That adds the additional benefit from a pricing standpoint. You're able to take requisitions and submit them to multiple vendors, asking those vendors to bid or quote on them. And then once they do that, they can actually reply from this portal so that they'd be able to enter the information and then submit that quote to you. So that's just another way to facilitate the relationship with the vendor, existing vendors or new vendors, and then have them be able to give you the best price uh, or the best delivery date uh, that's available there. All right, so I do want to make sure we have some time at the end for questions. So uh, I'll stop with the demonstration here. I got through most of the things that I wanted to go through with you guys. Certainly feel free to reach out. There'll be some contact information at the very end, and we can do a more in-depth demonstration answer more questions than what we're going to be able to do here in a few minutes, uh, but then also essentially do a day in the life, a walkthrough from that particular, at that particular moment. Uh, we do have a few more PowerPoint slides. So um, Susan, if you've still got those up, Adrian, if you could make Susan the presenter, uh, we'll walk through those here uh, and then, um, and then finish this off with questions. Okay, right. well, you should be seeing my screen now. Yep. Got it. Thanks. No, appreciate it. So just to kind of highlight some of the things that we talked about, onboarding new vendors as well as allowing vendors to make their own changes is a key component to the ROI. Reviewing and approving not only requisitions, but purchase orders as well as invoice batching uh, is also important because you're managing by exception. You're making sure that you're getting what you ordered at the right price and at the best price. The ability to issue the purchase orders and have those controls in place and when you issue purchase orders, you can send them electronically, you can send them via postal mail, you can send them via PDFs, you can have them automatically sent to the vendor. That's a part of making the process quicker and more efficient. You're maintaining vendor compliance because you're making sure that you're getting the items at the price that you've negotiated, that you've worked out with the vendor, and you've got oversight and visibility throughout the entire process. Okay, so the next one.
so from an AP side, they, they we have them as two different slides, but they actually correspond and they, they integrate together because I talked about you can actually maintain and better the relationship with the vendor from the very beginning. So by automating your processes, you get better vendor relations. Maybe you actually decrease the number of vendors that you work with because you got some that will work better with you uh, than, than others. So you're going to be able to get better processing times because you're working with the better vendors and you're able to pay them quickly. Maybe you're able to get some discounts because you're able to pay them quicker. From a data entry standpoint, it's a single point of data entry. So you're not having to worry about duplicate entry errors that you may experience the process. And then by automating the invoice matching process to what you've bought, the, the purchase orders and the receipts to what you've actually gotten in, then you're able to, again, make sure that it corresponds to your purchases. And you're managing by exception. I say that a lot. I've said that for, for years and years, but that is, a, that is a key component. You're not having to touch every single transaction that goes through. And the last one is payment processing. Traditionally, the payment processing is handled uh, from within the, the ERP solution, but there are some other options around that. But then that also means make it easy for your vendors to pay you, make it easier for them to get you the money, whether that's, that's, that's ACH or other electronic forms of payment. Okay, Susan. And now what we're going to show you real quick is uh, we've made this uh, all easier to calculate. So on our website uh, is actually a procure to pay calculator. So Susan, if you can click on the calculate now, uh, I should open that section on our website. You can also go directly to our website and right at the top, right in the middle, it says procure to pay uh, calculator uh, and you'd be able to have that there. So this is going to allow you to enter some information. So yeah, the first thing you do is, you know, how automated is your current purchasing process? You can play around with this. You can enter this multiple times in order to be able to see, but, you know, put in what, what your current process is. And then the next information as you scroll down is who are the personnel that are involved in the requisition process and the purchasing process? We've given you some industry averages from Paystream advisors that you can enter, but obviously if you're lower or higher than that, then you could put in your own details and your own information there. How many approvers do you traditionally have? Again, two is the industry average, and we see that throughout uh, our experience as well. And then Susan, go ahead and fill in, uh, just put a one uh, in the purchasing agent, purchasing manager, put a thousand um, in the requisitions just for a number to be there, and then scroll down a little bit more and put a one uh, into those two, and then put a thousand in there. So obviously these would be your numbers. You come up with these and be able to enter, and then once you submit, it's going to give you what those savings would be. So it's going to give you what your current cost is, what your cost with automation, and then what you can realize. And this is going to give you the flexibility to not only take what we've talked about today, but then also use your own information to have some numbers to go on. And then scroll down just a little bit more, Susan. Once you go in and click on Next Steps, it's then going to take you to another page, which provides you a lot of the information that we've been talking about today. And then at the very bottom, you can actually download a PDF uh, of a um, procure to pay uh, automation guide uh, that's been put together uh, with our sponsorship. So again, you can do that from our website. Uh, if you go to paramountworkplace.com right at the top, uh, it says procure to pay calculator or ROI calculator uh, and you're able to get there there. And go ahead and um, cycle through the last couple of slices and just so you have our contact information there or do them, don't do them too fast. I do want to leave time for questions. So we've got a couple of, um, yeah. yeah, a couple of slides here, uh, you know, testimonials from current customers uh, that you can look at uh, as well as uh, partners uh, that you can see. Uh, so we have been in the industry a very long time and have worked very successfully with many customers as well as many partners. So we welcome the opportunity uh, to work with you, whether you're a value added reseller or whether you're a current customer of Sage or a prospect that's looking for the application, uh, then we can certainly help out there. And we'll leave that with our contact.